Welcome. We are going to give our guest, our subject matter expert guest today, Kate James, a warm and detailed welcome in a few minutes. I just want to acknowledge that you're here, Kate, and we are so excited to have you here to help demystify the process of credentialing as a team coach with ICF. This is a topic of great interest to our community, and it's wonderful to have you join us today. Um, with that, I am going to um, hey, baby. just talk a little bit about our global community, just briefly to say that the purpose of these monthly calls is to engage our global community in different ways each month. So sometimes we focus on a case that one of our practitioners brings, or perhaps a couple of cases around business development or uh, coaching uh, processes and uh, coaching development. And today we have our first subject matter expert, which is Kate, who is going to help us all understand uh, credentialing. Um, with that, I am going to hand over to Brian to give a proper introduction to Kate. Well, thank you, Julie, and welcome to all of you. So good to have you here with us today. As Julie mentioned, we have a special guest, a subject matter expert, and I'm particularly thrilled to introduce Kate Jays to all of you. She is a credentialing coordinator with the International Coaching Federation, has been with ICF since January of 2021, and she is an expert in reviewing applications for the advanced certification in team coaching. I personally want to thank her and her team for not blocking my calls over the years. Uh, Kate and her team have been wonderful in answering questions that we've had at Corentis about the ACTC. And so I'm thrilled to have her here to be able to share her subject matter expertise with all of you. And so with that, I am going to turn it over to Kate. Thank you, Brian and Julie, and thank you for the introduction. I'm so happy to be here. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Welcome to this presentation on the advanced certification in team coaching. In this presentation, as Brian and Julie said, we're going to demystify the ACTC and share insights and frequently asked questions. So let's get started. The Advanced Certification in Team Coaching is a certification that allows coaches to build upon their competence as an ICF credential holder and demonstrate their advanced knowledge, skills, and abilities in the specialized discipline of team coaching. The ACTC launched on January 16th, 2023, after a seven year research process, which included subject matter experts, job analysis, and a pilot program. Through research, we developed the team coaching competencies. This model is designed to build upon and integrate with the ICF core competencies in team coaching contexts. By earning the ACTC, Candidates demonstrate that they've obtained a certain amount of team coaching education, team coaching experience, and coaching supervision that's been independently verified by ICF. There are three application paths or options available. The ACTC application is for those who've completed 60 hours of team coaching education, have five hours of coaching supervision, and have obtained five team coaching engagements within the last five years. The AATC application is for those who completed an ICF accredited AATC program, like the Corentis program, and have completed five team coaching engagements within the last five years. And then we have the credit for prior learning application. This application is designed for long-term team coach practitioners who may have begun their coaching practice before team coaching education was widely available. This application allows long-term team coach practitioners to substitute 30 hours of team coaching engagement or education for five additional engagements and five additional hours of coaching supervision. Today, I want to highlight some valuable resources for team coaches. 
First, we have the communities of practice. This includes subjects such as team and group coaching, as well as executive and leadership coaching and internal coaching. These communities provide a platform for coaches to share insights, experiences, and best practices. Next, we have the ICF Learning Portal, an excellent resource for continuous learning and professional development. The Learning Portal offers a variety of courses and materials tailored to enhance your coaching skills. For those interested in research, the Coaching Culture section on the ICF website is a must visit. You can explore the latest findings and insights by visiting the Coaching Culture link. Lastly, we have the Thought Leadership Institute, which is a hub for innovative ideas and thought-provoking discussions in the coaching field. These resources are designed to support your growth and effectiveness as a coach and has team coaching information. The ACTC has five requirements, an ICF credential as a prerequisite, team coaching education, team coaching experience, coaching supervision, and the team coaching certification exam. As we mentioned, there are currently three options to earn the ACTC, the ACTC application or option one on our website, the AATC application, which is option two, and the credit for prior learning. If you completed 60 hours of general team coaching education that's accredited or non-accredited or a combination of both, you would apply through option one, the ACTC application. If you completed an AATC program, for an example, if you completed the Corentis program, uh, you would, which includes coaching supervision, you would apply through option two. And then if you are applying with 30 hours of education, 10 engagements, and 10 hours of coaching supervision, then you would apply through option three. If you're not sure which application path to follow, feel free to reach out to ICF support and provide your certificate that you'll be using to reach education requirements and we'll guide you towards the correct application. Now to get into the frequently asked questions. Why is an ICF credential required as a prerequis prerequisite? It is important that advanced team coach practitioners have proficient knowledge of the ICF core competencies as demonstrated through the credentialing process. Because the core competencies are fundamental to the team coaching practice, along with the additional knowledge and skills needed for effective team coaching, the ACTC is meant to build upon a coach's flagship credential as an additional certification process that demonstrates that the coach also has the knowledge, skills, and expertise to apply the core competencies in team coaching contexts. Therefore, as a prerequisite, the ICF credential is required. The next question usually is, can an AATC program be used towards an ICF credential? And the answer is yes. AATC programs can be used towards the educational requirements for an ACC, PCC, or MCC. And if you already hold an ACC, PCC, or MCC and have since then completed an AATC program, the AATC program can be used towards the CCEs to renew your credential. What is a team coaching engagement? Team coaching engagements are how we measure your team coaching experience. A team coaching engagement includes all activities and sessions completed as part of a team coaching agreement. Engagements often consist of multiple team development activities, and it can include other team development activities, but it must include team coaching in order to be eligible to count towards the ACTC. How do I track my engagements? When you enter your engagements in your application to ICF, you will need to provide the start and end date of the engagement, the number of team members of the engagement, and if the engagement consists of more than 15 participants, the co-coach's name and email. You'll need to distinguish the team development modalities used in the engagement. You'll need the total hours of the engagement and the total hours spent in team coaching. How long does an engagement need to be? Currently, there's not a, a minimum 
number of sessions required for an engagement, and there's not a minimum period of time for an engagement. But keep in mind that typically engagements are longer term, for an example, four to six months, and consist of multiple sessions. We often get asked what the difference is between group coaching and team coaching. These are two different practices. ICF defines a group as a collection of people with something in common, for an example, a group of teachers. ICF defines group coaching as partnering with a group of individuals who share a common interest, learning experience, or skill, where the coach and other group members offer support and inspiration to maximize individual abilities and potential. ICF defines a team as a group of people with a common purpose and shared goals who work interdependently in a shared context. ICF defines team coaching as partnering in a co-creative and reflective process with the team and its dynamics and relationships in a way that inspires them to maximize their abilities and potential in order to reach their common purpose and shared goals. A main distinction between group and team coaching is that team coaching is focused on improving the collective outcomes of a dynamic team working towards a shared or common goal while group coaching is focused on helping individuals achieve their personal goals within a shared coaching space. A question that often follows is, what's the difference between coaching supervision and mentor coaching? ICF defines coaching supervision as a collaborative learning practice to continually build the capacity of the coach through reflective dialogue for the benefit of both the coaches and clients. Coaching supervision focuses on the development of the coach's capacity through offering a richer and broader opportunity for support and development. Coaching supervision creates a safe environment for the coach to share their successes and failures and becoming masterful in the way they work with their clients. Coaching supervision may include exploring the coach's internal process through reflective practice, reviewing the coaching agreement and any other psychological or physical contacts, both implicit and explicit, uncovering blind spots, ethical issues, ensuring the coach is fit for purpose and perhaps offering accountability, and looking at all aspects of the coach and client's environment for opportunities of growth within their system. On the other hand, mentor coaching consists of coaching and feedback in a collaborative, appreciative, and dialogued process based on an observed coaching session to increase the coach's capability of coaching in alignment with the ICF core competencies. Unlike with coaching supervision, mentor coaching is narrowly focused on coaching skills as they relate to the core competencies, while coaching supervision is broad in scope. For more information, you can visit the link below the coaching supervision page. What is the team coaching certification exam? The team coaching certification exam is the last step of the ACTC application process. Similarly to our flagship credentials, once all your materials have been reviewed and approved, you'll receive an invitation to complete the, ICI, the team coaching certification exam, sorry. The team coaching certification exam consists of 62 items developed and reviewed by team coaching experts. The 62 items are a combination of multiple choice and scenario based items. The total time allotted to complete the exam is two and a half hours and accommodations are available. The two and a half hours are divided across four sections. Sections one and three contain multiple choice questions, testing your knowledge on topics that are fundamental to the team coaching competencies. And sections two and four contain scenario based questions, testing your judgment and decision making and realistic team coaching scenarios. There is also a 10 minute break included. The exam is currently available in English and currently French and language French and Spanish language aids are available. The range of possible scores is 200 to 600 with a passing score of 460. The exam is issued through Pearson View and can be completed remotely or at a testing center. 
If you do not pass the exam, you may retake the exam again without having to apply all over again. How do I prepare for the team coaching certification exam? To prepare for the team coaching certification exam, study the team coaching competencies. On the team coaching competencies page, in addition to the PDF document, you will find a video walkthrough of the team coaching competencies by our research department and two videos following with Q&As on the team coaching competencies. On the exam page, you will find sample questions. There are five multiple choice sample questions and five scenario-based sample questions, each with the correct response provided. And finally, the most effective way to prepare for the exam remains studying the content and materials of your team coaching program. What documentation needs to be provided in your application to ICF? In your application to ICF, you will need to provide your team coaching certificates and two letters of verification for your engagements. Letters should be signed, submitted on company letterhead, and include the name and contact of the authorized representative, the representative's role within the team or organization, the name of the ACTC applicant, the total hours of the team coaching engagement, and the start and end dates of the engagement, and the number of team members. And if you are applying through the ACTC or Credit for Prior Learning application, you will need to enter your supervisor's information in the application to be verified by ICF. But if you completed an AATC program, then the supervision was included in the program. What is the application price and review time? AATC applications are $200 for ICF members and $300 for non-members. The estimated review time is two to four weeks from the date that you submit your application. The ACTC and Credit for Prior Learning applications are $250 for ICF members and $350 for non-members. The estimated review time is four to six weeks from submission. Now that you have your ACTC, how do you renew it? To maintain your ACTC, please keep in mind that you need to also be maintaining your ACC, PCC, or MCC, and complete 20 CCEs every three years. Of the 20 CCEs, at least 16 CCEs must be directly applicable to the team coaching competencies. The total 20 CCEs needed for ACTC renewal can also be used towards your credential renewal allowing you to count 20 CCEs towards both renewals. And of course, if you feel you need support in completing your application or have a question on the process or any of the requirements, please don't hesitate to reach out to the ICF support team. You can access ICF support through the contact us page found on our website or at the bottom of various credentials and standards pages is a section where you can access support and we are here to help. Thank you. Kate, thank you so much. That was incredibly clear and I know that we'll have a copy of your slides as a reference to come back to. Absolutely. Um, I'm guessing there are some questions and really encourage folks to come forward with what are your questions today for Kate? Feel I free to a, type them in the chat or come off. Alberto, yes. Yeah, I have a question on that last part you mentioned, uh, Kate. Uh, so when I need to, I need to renew my PCC next year. So I need to, I, I can use the current to CCEs for the renewal, for that renewal, and also to apply to, to the AATC certification? Yes, Alberto, that is correct. Okay. And uh, the Corentis program CCEs would count as core competencies. Okay. That's Great question. really good news for everybody. I That <laughs> was completely new to me that we could use them for both. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Um, I have a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. 
Um, so to that same topic about applying our Corentis program CEs to the renewal of an existing, in my case, PCC credential, you mentioned that once you're maintaining your ACTC, you can apply 20 hours towards your individual coaching credential. Since I'm not yet an ACTC, can I apply all of the Corentis CEs towards my renewal of my PCC now or just 20 of them? You can apply the Corentis program CCEs towards your renewal. And then after that, later, whenever you're ready, you can use it again to apply for your ACTC. Yes, thank you so much for clarifying that. And there's more than 20 hours in the Corentis program that I can apply to my PCC. So my question is, are there, can I apply all of my CEs from Corentis to the PCC, which would take me over 40 except for the ethics course? Yes, that's correct. Um, yep, yeah, all hours can, can count towards your PCC renewal. It's just that when you renew your ACTC, the 20 CCEs are required for that. Okay, right. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Jim, I'll go to you and then we'll go to Grace's question in the chat. You're on mute, sir. Okay, there we go. Um, so I've, I'm coming at this backwards. So I'm coming out of the consulting world and into the team coaching world and don't have an ICF based credential. And it seems like a barrier to me because it's a bunch of other work. I'm busy running my company. Mm -hmm. So what's the pathway? for an active team coach who loves, 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 and, and I'm deeply enmeshed with all the Corentis training programs to fastest path to that credential short of having to go through a yet another credentialing process from the ground up. You, you, I like the idea that the Corentis credits work for a newbie like me, but is that? Yeah, good question. So to map it out for you, the Corentis programs or any AATC programs are accredited for 60 hours, at least, of coach-specific training. Um, Corentis would be in team coaching. The requirements for the ACC starts at 60 hours of coach-specific training, so the Corentis program could be used to meet that 60-hour requirement uh, to begin counting your experience hours for credentialing and to become an ICF member. Um, so that would reach the education requirements. Outside of that, uh, we evaluate five, four other criteria for credentialing, uh, experience, mentor coaching, a performance evaluation, and the ICF credentialing exam. So outside of that education that you've completed, you would need to reach 100 hours of coaching experience. Of those 100 hours, 75 hours would need to be paid, and you'd have to have at least eight clients. Um, in addition to that, you would need to complete 10 hours of mentor coaching because mentor coaching is different than coaching supervision and it's required for credentialing. So you need to complete 10 hours of mentor coaching, three individual hours over a three month period. And through the process of the mentor coaching, mentor coach observing to your, observing your recorded coaching sessions, they should ideally help you pick out a strong recorded coaching session to submit to ICF, which would be your performance evaluation. Um, and then you would apply for your ACC through the ACSTH application. Um, that is the application that will allow you to use the AATC program towards the education. Uh, you would upload all of those materials to your ICF credential application. The review time is about 12 to 14 weeks. Uh, you would need to complete the ICF credentialing exam and then end up with your ACC, and then you would be eligible to apply for your ACTC after that. Okay, I know so, that was a lot. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I'm clear. I'm going to replay back what I just heard. All the Corentis training I've taken, that's going to count It's uh, for the 60 hours. For... If you completed the AATC accredited program, that's correct. Yeah. And that's something I, I'll, I'll wrap up with Corentis. And when that's done, then I have to have 100 hours of team coaching of coaching work not team coaching just coaching experience yeah and that's measured in hours rather than engagements for right. credentialing purposes 
Got it. And uh, and that and that hundred hours can be with. I, is there a certain number of clients that are needed there? Eight clients. Oh, eight clients. That's right. And then the same one is the ten hours of mentoring over three months, mentor coaching. That's over how many clients? That is that'll consist of you and another credentialed coach, a mentor coach. It's just um, a one to one. One to one or in group settings. Three of the hours are required to be one-on-one, but the seven hours can be one-on-one or in group. And Great. they'll just be observing your coaching and alignment to the core competencies. Yeah. I mean, I just love all the Corentis stuff. Um, and that's why everybody on my whole team, we're all busy getting Corentis trained. We'd like to be certified, but if it's too much of a distraction from delivering Corentis or in team coaching, it's, you know, that's the challenge, right? It's the, how do you build one to the other? So thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, let me go to Grace. You asked a question in the chat. Are, would you like to raise that? Yes, I think this is just the answer, just the yes. But if you allow me, I have uh, the question just at this time I can ask about an engagement. Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so in the for five coaching and team coaching engagement, um, even if that team members are less than 15 if we choose to have a co-coach with the team coach and if we both happen to apply to the certification would you give a credit for both co-coach for um, the team coaching engagement yes that would be acceptable mm -hmm. thank you for checking thank you wow good question um, I'm going to go to Peter, but Janice, did you have something you wanted to jump in? You're okay. Okay. Peter, your question. Yeah, just a curiosity question. Uh, the ACTC has been available now for, it sounds like a year and a half, correct? Correct. Uh, yep. I'm just wondering, what's the approximate number of coaches that have qualified for ACTC and what's the percentage of those coaches over the total coaches, at least in this country? That is an excellent question. I would have to run a report to get those exact numbers. But the last time I ran the report, which is about two, three weeks ago, we had over 400 ACTCs. I'm not sure about the percentage compared to coaches. I would have to um, do some math on that report as well. But I'm happy to follow up with that for you after this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks. question. Well, it's taking off. <laughs> yes. Very exciting. Ju yeah. Julie, your question. Sure. Um, Kate, thank you so much for all these details. How you keep them in your brain is uh, astounding to me. So you just have so much information there. Um, and my question has to do with what you shared with Jim's question. Um, all of those requirements, are they listed with that kind of detail and clarity on the website? Yes, there are. Um, all of our requirements can be found on our credentials and standards page. Okay. There's a drop down with each credential, the ACC, PCC, and MCC, and um, that has information on all the requirements and information pages for each requirement that goes into more detail. Okay. So I'll go ahead and share that link in the Thank chat. You. Absolutely. Great, Super helpful. Who else has a question? Janice. So curious on the 100 hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So does that have to be within the last five years or, or is that, can that be 10 years? For credentialing, um, the only time requirement is that you begin counting your experience hours once you're enrolled in a program that's at least 30 hours of a week, at least 24 hours are in core competencies. Um, and then there's no time limit other than that. So if you enrolled in that kind of program 10 years ago, you can start counting back 10 years ago. So um, if we started with Corentis uh, training two years ago, we can pick off client work that we've done since then? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Oh, it doesn't, um, um, the follow-up question of then Corentus training is a team coaching training. It doesn't have to be individual coaching training to begin the experience of ours. 
That's correct because the requirement is that you have hours and core competencies instruction. And since the team coaching competencies are based on the core competencies just applied in team coaching context, then that actually is categorized still as core competencies for credentialing purposes. Thank you. Actually, my question was, I kind of heard of rumors that ACTC requirements might changing in the near future will undergo some restructuring. Is that true? Or it will be still safe until 2025? I am not sure about that. I haven't heard anything about that. Um, but stay tuned. If we ever have any changes, we will put it on our website or send emails to our members and stakeholders. Great. Uh, Sarah. Hi, thank you for all of this. My head's kind of swimming in numbers and acronyms here. Um, but just to kind of follow up with what Grace was asking earlier about um, continuing the CCEs. So if you uh, are coach certified to get CCEs and you are ACTC certified, can you get um, uh, CCEs that cover both of those certifications if you have both of them? If you have both of them? Well, for the renewal of the ACTC, 16 need to be in team coaching competencies, so team coaching related. Mm -hmm. um, but those CCEs and team coaching could be used towards both renewals. Got it. Okay. The team coaching CCEs can be used for both coaching as well as team coaching. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. Much. Yep. And then if you did team coaching CCEs towards your credential renewal, that could be used towards ACTC. It just needs to be in team coaching. So um, team coaching can work towards your flagship credential, but it's not always vice versa if the hours aren't in team coaching. Okay. All right. Thank right. you. Janice. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. This is really um We've been following this for so long, and this is still very incredibly informative. So thank you so much. Absolutely. So the correctest way of team coaching is to you know, coach a team and then do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the leader. So would that be considered the one-on-one -on -one coaching with the leader? That'd be considered, I'm guessing, one-on-one -on -one coaching, part of those hours. And then the team coaching, coaching the team live, those are separate hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just mm -hmm. clarifying. That's great. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, but I was just... Always good to clarify, I think. A question for you, Janice. Yeah. Or whoever, Brian. Um, is the advanced education programs, which we've been kicking off this summer, which are great, are those uh, continuing credit qualifying? I will pass it along to Brian. Yes. Yes, Some are. we are putting in, we have applications in for those. So those are in the process of going through review. They will offer CCEUs. I think ICF should grant anybody who's got over 1,000 hours of parentis training an automatic ACC. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass your notes along. <laughs> I mean, I love, I mean, there's all this stuff. I mean, I mean, I know you do great stuff at ICF, but we get a lot of that really intensive, really grindy, you know, hands-on workshop stuff and other things through Corentis. And then um, there's a lot of new courses that are being rolled out and so I, I guess I was asked as continuing credit, right? Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, it would definitely fulfill the education, but there are just uh, uh, other yeah. elements to credentialing that, that need oh, to be Oh, no, I, I get too. that. I'm just talking about the continuing, uh, just the ed credits. Yeah. The ed credits. Oh, yeah. 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 Great. Alberto. Hi, Brian. The CCEs that are in process for with ICF, are they going to be given also to the uh, people that are already taken the core program? So just to clarify, the the core program has been accredited. It's an AATC. So your completion of that program earned you all of those hours. Jim, I believe, was asking about the advanced programs that we have rolled out this summer. So those are in the process of being accredited. The core program has been accredited. Has been accredited by... That, 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 does it also give CCEs? Okay. 
And that's also true then for essentials, foundations, and intensive, or just intensive? Uh, All of them. The intensive and foundations, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, right. But not essentials. Not yeah. essentials. That's a team tools. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to Anne's question. I love all the questions coming in. Me too. I appreciate, thank you. And thanks for this. This is terrific. I appreciate the outlining what the client needs to put in the letter um, that ICF needs. Do you have a template for that or just a standard business letter on their letterhead, letterhead will suffice? Uh, just a standard business letterhead will suffice. We do not currently have a template. Um, and all the information that needs to be in the letter is on our team coaching page too. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica. Hi. Um, thank you again. And thanks to Corentis for setting this up and making this so easy for all of us. <laughs> it's very appreciated. Um, I, I'm going to provide a brief amount of context before I ask my question because I don't want it to come across as intrusive. So I have helped run a credentialing program for the National Career Development Association in the past. And I'm familiar with, you know, assessments for new credentials and kind of tweaking them. So that's kind of the preface for my question. Are you seeing any trends in um, the applicants who have to retake your exam that you might suggest focusing on any areas of preparation when we're studying or any particular topics that seems like people may not always kind of have prepared accurately for or understand what's being asked? Yeah, that is a great question. And we do um, pay close attention to our exam statistics and pass rates. Um, as for future development of study materials for the exam, um, I would just stay tuned uh, for that. We may have um, we may have some things coming up. Okay, that would be wonderful. Do you expect those this year or after twenty four? It's not yet uh, public. The dates are not yet public. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more. Work. Question. If we stop recording, can she tell us the secret stuff that she can't? <laughs> <laughs> I we have time for one more question. Is there somebody who's still got a question out there? Okay, I, Kate, I just hats off to you for being so clear through what is often an intimidating list of requirements, and now. Not only is it an intimidating list, but there's this interlocking. You get you know double credit here and double credit there. It's fascinating. And I appreciate that the ICF has seen an overlap between team coaching and individual coaching, that there are competencies that are truly shared and therefore having that shared application of training credits is amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to quickly um, share my screen to finish us off. Um, and I'd like to just let everybody know what's coming next. The next event for our global community is a presentation by Yotam Schachter, who is our wonderful guest coming up on August 7th at our first Friday uh, at midday Eastern time. And we really encourage you to come. I can say I met Yotam, Yotam recently and took away something I thought about for weeks afterwards. So that's my expectation is that you'll have a similar kind of experience. And can I add something? Of course you can. So all of the past First Fridays have been recorded and edited and they are on our YouTube channel. So please go to our YouTube channel, it's been Corentis, and then you'll see all the recordings from our past um, thought leaders. So thank you. Yes. Yes, really good point. And what I'd like to invite you to do as a checkout is to just pause for a minute and take a breath and think about what's an important insight that you had today in this conversation. And once that insight has come to you, I'd invite you to put that in the chat. 
So I'm reading the chat as we sit here and just letting people have a chance to post their insights. Lots of appreciation for you, Kate. I know you can see this as it comes in. Um, Thank you Appreciation so for the ICF, yes. Thank you. Do you have any closing comments yourself as we as we finish? Just thank you for being such a great audience and asking such insightful questions. Um, and I hope to see your application soon. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. And thank you all for joining us today. Made for a really rich conversation.